Hi folks, to set up the contact form, we need to do this in two pieces. When using any form on a website, that form somehow needs to, first of all, connect to your web server, and then it needs to send the information to the server so the server can send that information off to your email program. There's no direct connection between a web page and your email itself when using a form. The form has to be directed through a server. So in order to do that, you can either contact your web host and ask them or get instructions on how to set up the form. If that's the case, you can simply open up the library, the shared, your contact page, and the form tag is right here about line 18. You can change that with whatever form tag your web host uses or recommends. If you want to use the free Super Submit service that we include with your template, Super Submit is a part of i3D Themes and Lucky Marble. It's not a company run by somebody else. It's actually our own company. It is part of our service, and it allows you to sign up for a free email server. And included with that are the ability to include the spam protection so that you can cut down on phishing and all the annoying emails that uh, may get submitted by having a form on your site. So to start with the Super Submit setup, the first thing you need to do is log into your own account page at i3D Themes or Lucky Marble. Once you're logged in, click on the download button and then basic form handler. From here, just click the click here to get started. You'll be asked for three pieces of information and this is important if you're working with a client. The information is the website domain, the email to which the email the the form is going to be submitted to and the name of the contact person now the reason why this is an important step is because if you're a developer the first piece in the process of signing up for super submit is verifying that you have access to that email address the reason being is it's law for one when using some sort of an automated form setup service we have to verify that you were the owner of the email. Two is it makes sense for typos. If you accidentally put in, you know, an extra letter, a wrong character or something when entering the email address and that email isn't verified, well, every form that is submitted from the website may be going to some stranger getting that email. And that can be annoying for them. It can be bad for business because you're not getting contacts from your, your website. And, uh, you're also sharing potentially personal information with a complete stranger. So with that said, we simply click the get started, enter your name, and I'm just going to minimize the page here so it shows a little bit better. There we go. And then we hit continue. It's going to ask for your email address. I'll enter that and then Finally, the web address. Okay, so I've given those three pieces of information. Whatever you do when you're signing up, that email piece right here, as soon as you hit the continue and submit button, Super Submit is going to send an email to this email address. In that email is going to be a link that you need to click to verify. You probably had these before when signing up for other services or newsletters, but just a simple click to verify. Once you have received that email and you've clicked the link inside of it to verify that you have access to that email, we can continue the setup process. If you don't get an email from SuperSubmit, make sure you check your junk and your spam. Those are typically will they get they'll get shuffled into if you don't have it. So we'll just go down the list here. We'll hit continue and you'll get the message, create account. We say yes, that is all good. And then you would log into your Super Submit account using your email and password for your regular website uh, or your regular account. Once you've logged in, sorry, once you've verified, log into your Super Submit account, click on forms, and let's create our first form. We're going to click Add Form. Do 
you'll see the form added to if you already have one you've been through this but it'll be added to your your forms at this point click the instructions button so there's really two or three pieces we need in here and i'm going to recommend that you add the google recaptcha for your website this will help in protecting from spam phishing that sort of a thing to add recaptcha go right to step two click the google link to open up the recaptcha site now if you don't have a google account you can simply sign up for one the option will be here to sign up i'm already signed up so i go right to my account page once you have a google account and they're free Click the plus sign to create a new recaptcha. Type in your web domain. I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to use it later in the page. Select the recaptcha type. At this point, I recommend recaptcha version 2 because we can use the I am not a robot checkbox. This gets rid of those annoying pictures pick how many traffic lights you see that sort of a thing yeah the i'm not a robot is by far the most popular scroll down a little bit more under domains this is where i retype or i paste in my domain name i accept the terms and i submit on the next page you have a site and a secret key select the site key copy Go back to your super submit instructions page under the site key paste and save back to recaptcha copy the secret key back to super submit place paste and save okay so the next step is all done for you. We've already put in all the code in the head. We put in the recaptcha. The only thing you need is the API key for your particular account. So now we're going to go back up to the step one. Right here, right after submit, this bunch of digits and letters, that's your API key. So just double click, copy. Go back to your website. We're already in the contact page. Go to the line, find the form, or basically what we're looking for is the form key right here. So we have used this piece of text, this placeholder piece of text called form API key, all in uppercase. We've used it wherever you need to actually put your API key. So you can use find and replace in your editor to update your entire site. To do this, we're going to double click on form API key. Control Shift F on the keyboard pulls up Find and Replace or Control uh, Command Shift F. You can also use the Edit Find and Replace for older versions of Dreamweaver. Newer versions actually has the Find and Replace right here. So we're just going to open that up. It automatically has the form API key selected. If not, just simply copy and paste it into the Find window. And in the replace window down below, pop in the new API key. Make sure entire current local site is selected. Make sure there's no trailing spaces after form API key. So if you put your cursor in here and it's sort of hanging off to the right with a little bit of space, nudge it right up to beside the Y. And if you knock it out of place, put it back in. Same here. Put your cursor and make sure it's blinking up at the very... Uh, edge of the last character. If you're good to go, hit replace all and hit yes. And my little find and replace box is going to come up. It is going to replace anywhere that that API key needs to be. That's it. Save, update, publish, and you're done.